Okay. Three. Just go. Hello my darlings, it's me! My name's Mona and welcome back to my channel. I am back and and I'm, I'm motivated and I'm ready to go. Uh, before we get started, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, I'm blonde. So if you don't mind that, I don't mind it. I actually think it looks kind of cool. So um, sorry if you like the purple hair, but it's gone and blonde's in. Woo! So anyway, welcome back. In this video, I've made a challenge for myself. I am going to put a, a ton of my D&D dice to good use because a ton of them are being unused. So I thought I might do something fun and make a challenge out of them. And the reason I have so many is because... I don't want to admit that I have a problem. I'm just gonna pick all these up now. Damn. <laughs> no. okay. oh, no. All right, did I get on them? Probably not. Let's continue. Look at them. Aren't they so pretty? They're all so pretty. So as you just saw there, I have a lot of dice. So what I've done is that I have picked out a dice at random. I picked out a set at random, and I am going to make a character based around them, give them a name, a race, and a class. Where the challenging part comes in is uh, I am not using uh, a class twice, I'm not using a race twice, so every single um, race and class I am using has to be uh, used once. So ho uh, hopefully there's enough races and classes and hopefully I have enough dice. So that's gonna be fun, hopefully, maybe. I've already done four. There's a couple more to go. 14 more to go, thanks to Christmas. Yeah. Hey guys, it's uh, Editing Mona here, and uh, I have 10 more dice to do. Not 14, I have 14 in total. Sorry about that. Oh right, if you guys don't know what Dungeons and Dragons is, by the way, uh, I can't help you. There's actually so much to go into that I can't just fit it all into this one introduction of this video. Uh, Google is your best friend, so I would recommend using Google to help you out and uh, figure it out if you want to play. Basically what it is, it's a tabletop role-playing game. What you do is that you create a character, you give it a race, you give it a class, and you give it names, and you give it points, and you give it, uh, you roll for different points. And it's just such a great fun game. You can do one shots, you can do campaigns that last months, years even. And I love it. And I've been playing it. And I have a couple campaigns going. And it's fun. It's really fun. Again, this is only part one because there's a lot to go through. So uh, this is going to be a reoccurring series. And I hope you like it. Uh, it's not just going to be uh, only based off my dice, but I hope to do more drawing challenges uh, basing other, thi other characters off other things. So. Uh, let me know in the comments below like what kind of challenge you might have, whether it be D&D related, Pokemon related, other fandom related, because I want to do more of that on this channel, as well as get out more animations and stuff for you guys. So uh, I'm back and I'm going to be more regular and I hope that uh, you guys enjoy what I have in store for you. Let's get to the art! So on this first drawing, I had an idea of having a badass elf kind of warrior and I was suggested to use a cleric for this one so that's exactly what I did I looked up some references had a look at the style of their clothing of their hoods and uh, I just went from there I don't know if you can tell but I struggled a little bit with the line art on this one especially her face I just wanted her face to have the right kind of features and the right kind of expression I wanted to try something different with the way that my poses usually are, so I wanted to try for a more dynamic posing, uh, practicing with some uh, perspectives.
I felt like the design was a little bit too plain, so I added some scuffs, some imperfections, some scars. I just think that that really brings the character around. So if you're stuck on something you can add onto a character, give her some folds, give her some uh, flaws. It, it makes her really fun. Now onto my favorite part of any drawing is the coloring right after the line art. Uh, again, I tried to stay very close to the dice that I was given since this is the challenge. I only get access to a few color palettes, so I went with more of a gold rather than a bronze. It's a really difficult color to replicate. Um, and I also um, added the navy onto her cloak, mainly instead of her uh, actual clothing itself that was um, that was made lighter. Um, change I decided to add the dice into the drawing itself so uh, I'm just replicating um, the shape of the dice one is actually my favorite of all the other pieces. This one is a tiefling based off these dice. Uh, so I actually don't really like this color palette very much, but I decided to um, go, go for it, take a chance, and it actually turned out to be one of my favorites. As you probably noticed, much like uh, any artist, I have trouble drawing the hands. Uh, with the color palette that I had to work with, it is obviously quite bright and very neon. Uh, so I decided for a little bit more subtle uh, complementary colors, such as the uh, golden yellow, and just sticking with uh, plain black hair. And I know in this part it doesn't look like a lot's going on, but it's actually me individually adding all the freckles to her shoulders and her arms and her cute little face. Oh my goodness, she's so cute. Usually I actually don't add backgrounds onto uh, my drawings, I don't find that I'm particularly good at them uh, and it's often most times distracting from the actual piece but this one I really wanted to try and give a uh, and give like a blurred out of focus look to the background. Just like the other one, I added a sneaky uh, little easter egg of the dice just there in the corner.
Now this one took a lot of concepting and a lot of sketch work on this one because I couldn't quite find the right look for it. But in the end, I think I think I got what I was looking for. Now, this one was supposed to be a Aarakocra, although to some watching who know D&D, they may think, oh, that looks more like a Kenku. Uh, to me, there's not really much of a difference, and uh, I've talked to a lot of DMs about this, and it, Kenku and Aarakocra, it's really what you make it and the rules that they want to set for, for the world. The dice was actually clear with um, red inking on it, but uh, when you held it up, it kind of looked clear. And I had the idea of making the uh, Aarakocra albino, so complementing with the, the red eyes and the red accents. try to make a bit of background for this one but like I said I, I'm just it's not my strong suit um and I wanted to do kind of like a uh alleyway but it didn't work out so well so I I, I just did a plain old background Now usually it's the best for last, but this one was actually the most challenging uh, that I had to work f work with. Uh, I decided to go with a dwarf for this one, a uh, female dwarf, and I was suggested to give her a, uh, a beard. Uh, something that I haven't actually done on any female character before, but I did like the idea since it's, it's exactly what the race would have. I wanted to give her long flowing hair and a uh, long dress that was like singed at the end like she was walking through lava which is the, the, the impression that the dice gave me and um, to complement some darker uh, colors in there I made the chains and the armor a darker gray. Uh, it came out more gray than I would have wanted um, but the impression uh, was meant to be a, a dark metal.
And once again, I tried to add a background to this one. I wanted her to be walking through lava or, or fire or something. Um, the brush I used didn't work out so well, so I tried a different brush. Uh, that didn't work out too well. Um, so uh, in the end, yes, I did just go with the plain old background again. But I think that this character actually was too busy for a background. So I just started to scrap it and keep the focus on the character. And like I said, I actually struggled a lot on this one. Um, I just kept drawing and drawing and drawing and recoloring and recoloring. And it just never quite sat right. I kind of like the line art. I think the line art's good. But when it came to the coloring, it just took me the longest to do. And I, I, leave in the comments below what you think I, I could do to improve. Because I'm still looking at this thinking something's missing or something could be taken away or... I'm just not happy with it, but I want to hear your guys' opinion. Hope you guys enjoyed it. My light is dying at the moment, so I'm going to wrap this up. Be really, really quick. So you guys can actually get involved on this challenge. Um, I have suspended my Patreon. Uh, there's not really much activity on there anyway, and let's face it, I don't really know how to run it properly. So instead, uh, you can use my coffee link down below to uh, give me one dollar, two dollars, whichever. And no matter how much amount of money you give over on coffee, you will go into the draw to win a uh, full drawing, a full commission uh, of any D&D character. Has to be D&D related, because that's the thing that we're going for here. Okay, um, but it's a full body commission, something like this, which I usually charge anywhere between $30 to $50 for, you can have for as little as $1. So give that one a go. Coffee links in, is below. If that picks up, I might start doing uh, a better uh, Patreon so that you guys can get rewards, you guys can get behind the scenes stuff, and you can get more content that I want to get out and share with you guys. And with that, I'll end this video here. Mona loves you. Bye. Mwah.